Will we ever be consistent as a podcast? That's not my decision. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, I, uh, I wonder if my jaw pop just got picked up on mic because I was loud in my ear. It might have been, yeah. It was pretty dramatic for the people watching or listening. Whose fault is it that we didn't put a podcast out for the past two weeks? Um, Yours. You were in a different state. I literally said we could double record and we could have filmed when I got back. That is a lie. All right. Historically speaking, that that's like an that doesn't really count because I was on I was on an actual trip. So just now you're admitting that it's because you were on a trip and not because of me. Okay. I'm just messing mm-hmm. with you. We are an unusual couple, you know. How was your trip, though? Season three, 1985. The gang is getting tall. Everyone is growing up and shopping at the mall. Um, what'd you say? How was your trip? <laughs> it was fun. I went to California. You guys know my buddy Trevor from Film Geeks. He got married. I was in the wedding. It was cool. It was tiring. It was going, going, going all week from a bachelor trip to hanging out and all that. And I physically was exhausted by the time I got home. Yeah, I was just exhausted hearing about it personally. Yeah, so I've been resting all week. So I have been uh, not putting out as much stuff for those who watch my content. By that, he means not uploading an extremely long full-length video every single day, which is just oh a God. wild a wild thing to do in normal health. This let week's alone about to be huge, health. though, because we have a lot to look forward to this week. That we do. Yeah, Spider-Verse week, baby. We're talking about that a lot later on in this video, but I'm excited. She's rocking the Miles jersey. I'm rocking the mouse. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about the mouse first, I guess. <laughs> okay, yeah. So. Oh, for me, before we do that, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I have a head cold. So if I sound stuffy or if I sneeze or cough at any point in time in this podcast, that's why. I have my tissues right here off screen, ready to go. Um, it's not been good. I've been dying a little bit the past couple of days. She's ill. But I'm better. I feel. I feel better today. I sound better today. I think that's good. I haven't taken any decongestant yeah. yet, so. Well, good. Good. It's good for you. Happy. Okay. Well, maybe on. We saw the Little Mermaid mm-hmm. live action. Halle Bailey. What's the dude's name? Jonah. Howard King, I believe. Right? Howard King. Love him. Yeah, oh. we saw it. Little Mermaid's out. It's the newest Disney live action remake. I was going to see the movie early. We both were, but I was again out Once of town. again, he was in California. So we saw it Thursday. And we a got, hassle for both of us. We got popcorn and Reese's Pieces mm-hmm. and an Icy. A Cherry Icy. And it was good. We sat front and center in the theater pretty mm-hmm. much. Not front row, but like oh, middle of the it theater. It was the cutest Perfect thing seat. outside yeah. of the theater. I was waiting for Chris and I was standing next to this little girl who was in like her little, like a little mermaid, like dress up dress. And I was like, I like your dress. And she was like, thank you. And I was like, you look very pretty. And she was like, thank you. And I was like, you're adorable. And I love you so much. Yeah, that was cute. I, I didn't see the interaction. But no, you were in the I was in the bathroom. But yeah, very got, got to empty the bladder <laughs> before, <laughs> before a movie. Got to. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed Little Mermaid. We did a review of it on Chris's channel. But we can talk about it a little bit more here. Um, I'll start with the obvious, I think. Uh. Halle Bailey. I never had a single doubt in her in my entire life to be a good Disney princess. Uh, she was amazing. She embodied Ariel perfectly. She just has a very magical Disney princess e vibe to her just naturally in her everyday life. So that conveyed very well on screen. The surprising factor in the movie for me, though, genuinely was Prince Eric. Like, I was shocked because uh, in all the trailers and teasers and stuff he wasn't doing it for me granted he was not the center of any of the trailers at all because it was all about Hallie which as it should be and he was really barely in any of the promo but I just didn't expect him to be as good as he was he was great he stole the show not really he didn't steal the show in he the helped sense of, he helped yeah carry I, the show yeah yeah yeah. He, he's a great supporting character and he was actually a character that was a cool thing <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's not in the original movie uh nor is really ariel or anyone for that matter um <laughs> jenna's gonna be pissed <laughs> i'm sorry jenna um no this movie to me is just far and away better in terms of i'm looking at this as an overall movie like mm-hmm. i actually f- like felt something Mm-hmm. watching their relationship unfold and them falling in love with each other. I'm referring to Ariel and Prince Dude. Eric. The Even the littlest things mm-hmm. in their relationship, for example, 
you pointed this out. Mm-hmm. I know you're a fan of it. Is the way that Ariel mm. conveyed to mm-hmm. Eric what her name was because she can't speak. Mm-hmm. It was it was way cute. It was sweet. It was way cute. Yeah, it was way cute. <laughs> it was yeah. It was so so much better than Sebastian just whispering it into Eric's ear. It's just and then the whole written in the stars. Oh. Yeah, it was. Uh, oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ! It's so good. <laughs> it was, yeah. And then making them just so many little tiny things that make them falling in love in three days just so much more convincing. Them both being collectors of random things. Them both feeling trapped by their parents and their parents holding them back from what they yep. really want to do and what yep. they really want to be. And it's just all. It was just all so good. We Wi- got Wild Uncharted Waters. I was about to say we got a musical number. Was from the Prince a gob smacking moment for me i remember when the song was over i turned to look at chris and chris turned to look at me <laughs> and we both had tears in our eyes beautiful we yeah like, i love when a dude gets to sing his heart out like belt like yeah much like evermore beauty and the beast that's been the constant comparison since mm-hmm. we got out of the theater but i love when like a man just gets to sing his heart out and he did men. that and it just it's it hit hard um no, it just he, kept getting better and better at first i was like What's... I don't know if this is going to... Oh, and then it was like Yeah, that. I was like, what yeah. is this? It was one of those moments. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that worked. I thought Melissa McCarthy was great as Ursula. Oh, yeah, she slayed. Honestly. Her voice sounded exactly like the original Ursula, honestly. Pitch perfect. Like her voice, everything about it. That uh, that was great. And then I actually liked Javier Bardem as King Triton, I would say. Oh, yeah, yeah. he ate. All around. I mean, e- even Sebastian was solid. Mm-hmm. I thought that they did a good job of like making them... The animated CGI realistic animals still like cutesy in a way mm-hmm. where they still felt like playful, like like animated creatures without looking hyper realistic to a fault, which the Lion King did. Mm-hmm. So I admired that. Mm-hmm. I think literally the only bad part of the movie maybe was the scuttlebutt. Other than that, everything. Oh was yeah, good. and Scuttle as a whole, frankly, I wasn't it for me. Was yeah. not it. Eh, uh, and yeah. I honestly didn't. Like, it's hard to top some of those original musical numbers. Like, Under the Sea, the original, it's better. Yeah, the original is better. I think the remake is beautiful. Like, the CGI and everything is just absolutely stunning. But I think, you know, stuff like that, it's hard to top yeah. what animation can do. I was literally thinking of, like, Just Can't Wait to Be King, the live action versus the animated version. Because the live action version, it just it lacks a little bit of the charm. And I thought that uh, with Little Mermaid, it's kind of the same boat. Yeah, I just loved it. I'm glad you loved it. It was a very good movie. Four out of five stars for me. A few things kind of held back from being amazing, but I still really dug it. I'm like a sucker for anything Disney princess related, really and truly. It's hard for me to really be critical about anything that relates to a Disney princess. Except for like, there's a few exceptions. But Disney princess movies are like my comfort movies, so... Yeah, I enjoyed it more than the original. I, I seriously did. So, speaking of that, I think we have a fun little we have segment. We a little today. game. Yeah. So, in honor of The Little Mermaid coming out, we did this. We talked about this again in one of your videos, right? Talk, we talked about re- uh, remakes and ranking them and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We talked about live action. We remakes re-ranked. Ranking. We ranked the remakes. There you go. On Chris, <laughs> there you go. On Chris's channel, but. We're going to do a little game where we vote for, I made these, aren't they so cute? The original or the remake of a movie, like of the Disney of the Disney movies. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven-ish yeah. that we're going to go through. We haven't seen all of them. I'm going to just throw some out that we haven't seen. Pinocchio, Aladdin, Lady and the Tramp. Mm-hmm. Um, just because I hear that it's not. Yeah. A lot of them I've heard it's not worth watching. Yeah. Um, like haven't seen Mulan. the remakes. Seen the original, yeah. Mulan. Um, there you have it. That's pretty much the gist of it. But Basically, we would have picked original for all of them anyways, probably. So. Exactly. Most of them are original anyway, but we're going to get into this. There might be some variety, as you'll see. Mm-hmm. Um, let's spice it up and not go in the order they're written down, though. Okay. Do yeah. you want to you pick the order? Okay. We'll go with uh, the first one we'll do is The Lion King. <laughs> original versus remake. Three, two, one original all Easy. day with all ease. day i mean i don't think i'll ever watch the remake of the, Lo- the lion king ever again no i never will the most memorable part of that night was getting rear-ended on the way home from the movie theater oh is that when that happened yeah. that's so funny yeah um <laughs> everyone always says this and i want to talk about this i want to hear your Go point ahead. Of view. yeah we can talk about this people as as always say 
it's this it's the same story bro with like the skull emoji or the laugh emoji as if i'm stupid for loving the original and not liking a remake okay if it's the exact that's, same that's story, actually the issue <laughs> if it's the exact same story then why wouldn't i want the more charming version exactly but here's the thing like they just dumb everything down the musical numbers eh, like they don't have any of that creative flair or pop mm-hmm. no character has any charm in that movie especially mm-hmm. the voice acting and the actual design of the character and i'm gonna watch the classic version that i have the nostalgia for over some literal copy paste type situation mm-hmm. so 100 percent the original all day mm-hmm. like you know it's not even close how do you I, feel about that copy paste thing? I I don't like it. I think if you're gonna remake something, you gotta add, you gotta add something to it. And it, and I understand and respect keeping like the original source material and stuff. Not wanting to change too much because if you're gonna change a lot of it, why remake it? Just make a whole new movie. But I think again, The Little Mermaid is a perfect example of this. You're keeping the basic bone structure of the plot, but you're adding so much more to it to make it a more compelling story. To make the characters more compelling these characters that were made like decades ago when did little mermaid came out the 50s the 60s little mermaid came out in 1989 oh yeah. my bad you're good sorry i was thinking sleeping Beauty. it's fine it's fine that's on me sleeping beauty is the 50s you're good yeah speaking of sleeping beauty oh you want to do that one next sleeping beauty versus maleficent which is technically not a live action They're remake. not. it's not a remake but guess yeah. what that's all i unfortunately have to work with there's two of them though the we're just doing the first one i know i i was kind of joking at the fact that no one cares about the live action remake sequels like Mufasa which is coming soon but anyway topic for another time really yep topic for another time on three one two three original give me Sleeping Beauty over Maleficent I I am a Sleeping Beauty Aurora girly for life that was my favorite Disney princess growing up Mm -hmm. my mom made me an Aurora dress for Halloween and I slept in the crown when I was little when I was just a wee little baby girl and I just always, I was blonde when I was a kid, so I guess I gravitated to her yeah. instead of Cinderella for some reason. Who knows why? I just loved her so much. I don't know how Maleficent didn't scare me as a child, but it was just my favorite movie to watch. I never gravitated towards this one too much as a kid. I thought that it was Well, you were a dude, so. <laughs> I thought it was just kind of boring most of the time. A lot of people say that, and I think... I actually just had this conversation with Jenna. I'm going to expand on that topic for a second, if you don't mind. I just had this conversation with Jenna because Jenna was like, I told her that some parts of The Little Mermaid weren't, you said The Little Mermaid was boring in your video and she got mad at that and she was like, well, you agreed with him. I was like, so what? I say things all the time. And then she was like, Sleeping Beauty's boring. And I was like, here's the thing. I don't think it is. I think the thing about Sleeping Beauty is that you have to look at it like this. The Little Mermaid, just using this as an example, is like its own thing. It was created to be a Disney princess movie. Sleeping Beauty was a ballet first. It's a ballet from the 1800s. And like the music is classical music from the 1800s and then later was adapted into a Disney princess movie from that music. So a lot of the movie, there's not a whole lot of talking necessarily because it is very centered on the music. And I was a dancer growing up. I grew up with ballet music. Classical music is soothing to me. It always has been and always will be. That's part of the reason why I like watching Sleeping Beauty, like for my background movies, for my comfort movies, because a lot of the time it is music and I just like classical music. If you don't like classical music, I get that you probably wouldn't like Sleeping Beauty, but it's, especially because it's, again, it's an older movie. It is in the 50s. There's less that they can do. So it does not have that much dialogue. It's a lot more musical, not musical, but you know what I mean? It's a lot more music based. So some people can find that boring. I find that as room for imagination personally. Um, And I also think that that's why if we got an actual live action Sleeping Beauty, like a real one, it would be so good if they did what they did with The Little Mermaid. They could make the relationship between Aurora and Philip extremely compelling because they have such a good story. Yeah, I don't think Philip speaks in the movie. He at all. does. <laughs> he literally I, sings with her. I, uh, yeah, I, I, Sleeping Beauty is a fine movie. I know you love it, so I don't want to be mean or anything to it, but. You I just s- don't understand it, and that's okay. <laughs> you just don't get it. Um, the girls that get it, get it. Anyway, it's, uh. I just know that if we got a live action Sleeping Beauty, number one, the songs would, would slap. You're telling me that a, a Philip original song. When he's on his way to save would. Aurora, wouldn't absolutely hit. It would. You're right. Um, we would get, in my mind, 
they I, meet more than once in the woods. Yeah. Like maybe they get like a week of meeting before the, it's her birthday and she mm-hmm. has to go back to the castle. So we have like time to the expand th- on them. The thing about not only this movie, but others from the era of Disney Princess original the older movies. Ones. Yeah, not like, like uh, yeah, the olden days, 50s, mm-hmm. 60s, is that I didn't really feel like anyone was a real character. Like I didn't care about any yeah. of them. I mean, hell, we'll talk about Cinderella soon, but like, it's it, even Snow White in the original. They're just the most one note, like icing, and no, I'm gonna not. fall in love by the end of the movie, and that's that. And it's like the almost the imagery of these princesses, like the look and like the character walking around the Disney park. There's something special about that. But you go and watch the movie, and they're never like the best parts of the movie. That might be why Maleficent was the main part of it because that was their most memorable part of the movie. No, she and then is you've not. got you know the animal characters in Cinderella, <laughs> like Gus Gus, Jack, and then Jack. and then you've got uh. What's it called? The uh, the the damn seven dwarfs. Those are the that's like some of the best part of the Snow mm-hmm. White movie. So, uh, I don't know. I just think Sleeping Beauty to me was one that I never was like. This is a movie I must watch a lot. I just have like a. F- I literally have a plan in my head for what the remake should be. I also have an idea that in a Sleeping Beauty remake, they get a scene where so Philip is from a different kingdom mm-hmm. than Aurora. So we get a scene kind of similar to like the Tangled scene where they're in the kingdom. And, like, Philip takes Aurora to his kingdom, and she gets to, like, they, like, walk around, and he, like, shows her things and stuff. And because it's not her kingdom, like, nobody yeah. knows who she is, so it's fine. Yeah, interesting. And wouldn't that just be so sweet and cute? Yeah. <laughs> In terms of the question here, original remake, Maleficent, to me, is also just <laughs> dull. Like, the I never saw the second film, but I was, uh, I remember vividly actually having to rewind multiple times. I <laughs> fell asleep watching it. So, this uh, this I like property, Mal- I guess, the first Maleficent. not really for me. I like the first Maleficent. There you go. And I will defend Sleeping Beauty to my last breath. And that's awesome. <laughs> so, <laughs> What do you want to do next? Which one? Uh, let's go ahead and get Cinderella over with. I don't actually have one for this. I haven't seen the remake fully, so I'm letting Cam take the wheel here. Original or remake? Three, two, one, go. Wow. <laughs> that movie is so overrated. I'm not even going to lie. Um, yeah. It's not. It's the same thing. Like, you just don't get it. Oh God. You just don't get no, it. No, the movie's just super overrated. You just don't get it. It's iconic. I'm not gonna deny that. You'd be crazy to say it's not. Um, Cinderella's castle. I mean, hell, it's the landmark of Magic Kingdom at Disney World. Or at least it was until they painted it pink for some reason. Who's to say? But you've got the whole like final moments. That's iconic. The actual movie, though. I mean. Now, okay. It's, when it's, I. It's a snoozer kind of. When. Sorry. When I pick original for Cinderella, this is a very hard decision for me. I think that Richard Madden is such a perfect casting as a prince. And I think Lily James is such a perfect casting as Cinderella. And I adore the 2015 Cinderella so, 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 so much. But like I said before, I grew up with these Disney princess movies, specifically the older Disney princess movies. And when I go to rewatch Disney princess movies, my go-to ones are... Sleeping Beauty, then Cinderella, then if I'm still feeling like the older ones, Little Mermaid, and then like Tangled and Frozen, right? Those are like my favorite ones to rewatch. So I just am, I'm just watching the original Cinderella more. And I like the songs and I like Jack Jack and Gus Gus and Arisafi. Fair. I have not much input for Cinderella, so we can move on to the next one if you're good with it. (laughs) Yeah. That doesn't mean I don't dislike the remake. I love the remake. Uh, next, we'll do the good old-fashioned 101 Dalmatians Cruella, which is a weird situation because it's like a reimagining versus yeah. an original. Um, I think uh, I'm ready. If you are. Ready? Three, two, one. Oh, really? I was thinking you were going to go original. I love the original, but recently I've thought about it. I'm shocked. <sighs> I'm actually gonna <gasps> oh, I'm going to switch Oh, switching up OG. in the middle of the game. Yeah, I'm going original. And the reason is I love seeing Cruella de Vil as like a villain towards the Dalmatians in the film. In Cruella, it's more of a prequel origin story of her descent into madness, which I appreciate. Yeah. Emma Stone rules. They're so hard to compare. I don't. I literally love them both, so I'm not taking any shots at Cruella. No, it's definitely this hard because it's not an exact remake. It's just remake. a little more nostalgia for me. Mm-hmm. You know, Pongo, oh boy. And Purdy, the Dalmatians, uh, seeing Cruella and the way the Dalmatians escape, it's a very nostalgic movie in some could call it a little slower paced because a lot of the 50s and 60s Disney movies they just have that slow pacing where there's like 10 minutes where there's you know the orchestra and like a chase classical music yeah 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 and uh, that's fine and dandy but I just think Cruella DeVille in that film the original 
all time great Disney villain. Yeah. She's terrifying. Um, maybe she was the high evolutionary before the high evolutionary. Oh shit. In terms of animal abuse You're or right. And um yeah, it's just iconic for me. The Cruella de Vil, Cruella de Vil. It's iconic. Yeah. I love it. It's, it makes me happy whenever I rewatch it as an adult. I love both of them. Yeah. I just am a Emma Stone stand till I die. So That's totally fair. Cruella rules and we need a sequel. I think we're getting one. Oh, no way. I think they said it. I looked it up on, on Wikipedia. I don't know if you can trust them, but they said Gillespie's going to direct and it's going to be like, remember the post credit scene with uh-huh. Pongo and Party? Oh. It could set up like a, wow. basically awesome. the live action remake of 100. That'd be nice. That'd be cool. Yeah. Next, we're going with the Jungle Book. Um, do you want to even put your? I don't really care for either. Okay, I'll go. I'll I'll give my input, but right. you do the talking. Okay, three, two, one. Original. Uh, the reason for me is childhood nostalgia. You've got uh, Bare Necessities, Want to Be Like You. Those are two of my favorite Disney songs. The remake, though, I'm gonna hold this up real quick. The remake, it made damn near a billion dollars, which is super impressive. It was directed by John Favreau and. It uh, featured a pretty impressive voice cast. Like Scarlett Johansson was in the movie, Idris Elba, Bill Murray. Yeah, it's a very impressive voice cast. I believe Christopher Walken was King Louis, but either way, huh. it wa- it made the story a little more epic, especially near the end. It added a few little things, but give me the original because of the feels, the nostalgia, and it's a little bit more of a quick hitter. So we have a few more left here. Save the two biggest ones for last. Yeah, we're gonna save the biggest the hardest one for last for me so we're gonna do the little mermaid next okay the next one's really hard but little mermaid three two one <laughs> remake yeah that's a hot take i've seen by the way really a lot of people love the original little mermaid yeah they really do and more power to them I've i'm seen... not even trying to be mean to the movie here i the reason i prefer this film is because i genuinely care about the characters care about the characters more it's more fleshed out but for me personally I don't have that nostalgia attachment to Little Mermaid. That's I watched it as a kid, but I was like, oh, yeah, it's a Little Mermaid. But it wasn't my Lion King. It wasn't my Jungle Book. I've seen people complain about, like, the the smallest and tiniest things not being in The Little Mermaid. Like uh, her signing her name on a literal literal contract with Ursula. Or um, people complaining about Les Poissons not being in the movie. Which we did really want Lynn to play that role if that was going to be the movie. Mm. But it, it wasn't, so it's fine. I literally, until you mentioned it, I was like, wait, what are you talking about? And I was like, oh, yeah, the chef. Yeah. And um, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's, it's, not, <laughs> it's, it's not a plot point. It's fine. I'd rather take out Le Poisson and put in more like time at the market with Ariel and Eric. Which we got. We got a, that dancing scene. That was super sweet. That was so much fun. Yeah. Um, you know what else they did? Like, I felt like everything came full circle so much better. By the end of the movie, it, it like we got to see all of the mermaids, the mermaid people or the mer people. Is that what they mm-hmm. call themselves or whatever? And they were all like out and about as Eric and Ariel kind of uh, went off. Mm-hmm. It was sweet. It felt like more satisfying in a way than mm-hmm. the original film. Because to me, a lot of the OG Disney movies end very abruptly. Yeah. Kind of like the Karate Kid movies. The Little like, Mermaid. Boom, it's over. The Little Mermaid <laughs> ends really fast. And what I like about the remake is that she goes home for what seems like a week. Like she's in the ocean for like about a week. And Triton's like, okay, she's like literally so depressed. What am I supposed to do? And then she comes back yeah i um i just genuinely prefer this remake mm-hmm. I, I think that it's a better movie through and through i've seen a lot of people uh have agreed a lot of people disagree but um it just yeah it also had a pretty cool cameo with the jody benson the that original. made me cry i like yeah. gasped in the theater because i didn't know what was happening yeah. I so, went, ah! i'll look i'll give the original the music in terms of if we're comparing the main three original songs which would be uh kiss the girl um uh, under, under the sea and i don't know i think hallie's hallie's is better for, hallie's part, better part for role. sure and so then, i actually then would the, say the remake has wild uncharted waters um that song yeah, the I new was, song for ariel with well in terms of music i was saying like gravity yeah all the new down. songs rule except for the scuttlebutt yeah but the music that was created for the original film compared to the music under that was readapted sea. for the remake it's like under the sea original under you can't top sea. I might actually give the other ones to the new one, though. It's tough. Darling, it's better. It's a hard call. It's a hard call. But next is the hardest one for me. This is the one I struggle with the most, seriously. I'm not about to struggle at all. Beauty and the Beast, original or remake. <sighs> I'm ready tough. to go. This I'm ready to go. ready to go. Yeah, I'll count you down. Okay. Three, two, one, go. <sighs> I got to go remake. And it's like, it's so hard because the original Beauty and the Beast... I believe it was the first animated feature ever to be nominated for Best Picture at the Oscars. Like, for really? real. For real. Like, it is oh. that good of a movie. Um, 
the reason I choose this one truly is because I listen to the soundtrack more in my car. I was about to say yeah. the same thing. I've gotten to the point yeah. where if I'm listening, I have a Disney princess playlist, right? Where it's just like all the Disney yeah. princess songs on there. Um, I've gotten to the point where if Beauty and the Beast from the original like cartoon movie comes on, I skip it and I go to the live yeah. action. And another reason too. Evermore. Oh man, Be come on, serious. come on. The mob and song? Gaston, Eats. yeah. Luke Eats. Evans, yeah, honestly. The Eats. reason I choose this one, it's the same reason I choose Little Mermaid. I think they do a better job of expanding relationships. It's just like, so much more. They humanize the beast even more. So much more. And there's just so much more to it. If I'm going to watch it, there's just I just, I love it. I just do. Yeah, you I get lo- more bang for your buck. It's about a two-hour, 15-minute movie compared to roughly an hour-and-a-half movie. Same situation with Little you Mermaid. You get more of Maurice. Yeah, you get more songs. Love more him. Yeah, more fleshed-out characters. Um, I will say the original is amazing, but it's the same point I made with, I believe, The Little Mermaid, and I believe one of the other films on this list. Beauty and the Beast is a movie I watched growing up. I'd seen it once or twice. It wasn't one that meant so much to me, which is why I can say, oh, I prefer this version with more character development and better songs, you know? So I watched kind of how I feel. I watched Beauty and the Beast growing up, obviously, but I think I was inclined to not like Belle as much as, or at least not admit that I liked Belle as much as I did, because... She was my sister's favorite princess, and we weren't really allowed to like the same one. Same thing happened with One Direction members. I was not allowed to like Harry. Wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> I already knew that. Yeah. Um, but, and also, I was blonde, and for some reason, as a five-year-old, I felt like I wasn't allowed to like a Disney princess that wasn't blonde. I don't mm. know. Five-year-olds are weird. Very. But now, as an adult, I love Belle. Yeah. There you have it. All right, real quick before we end out this segment Mm -hmm. and go into our Spider-Man hot takes, I want to get your answer. This is a fun one, and it could be out of left field. For me? Yeah, I'm going to answer it. You're going to answer it. What is your favorite direct-to-DVD Disney sequel? So you know how they made like like them for all... I know my answer. Okay, what's your answer? Uh, Cinderella 3, A Twist in Time. Is it actually good? It, Chris, it's so (laughs) fucking good. So I need to watch it? You don't even understand. I'm hype. I'll watch it. Not today, but I will. I'm honestly... I'm. I, I just got emotional for some reason thinking about what I'm about to say. Look at my eyes. Oh my god, advice. One guys. of my answers. <laughs> what is it? It's a beautiful movie. Sorry. He's crying. I'm tearing up right now. Childhood memories. Ready? The Lion King two, Simba's Pride. I adore that. Isn't movie. there a Lion King one and a half? Yeah, that one too. That's like a del- It's like yeah, the Lion King two, Simba's Pride. I had the VHS tape, and I know it you wasn't did. like the kind where it was the paper cardboard slip over. It was like the plastic one that you opened up. You know. I think I have a video of you showing and, it to me. Um, I love it. You know, I sold the Blu-ray, though. I don't know why. It's on Disney Plus now, so it's fine. Damn. The music still slaps. I was listening to the soundtrack the other day in my car. Super fond memories of that movie. It's definitely an adult looking back. It's like, oh, this is DVD quality, but I still adore the movie. It's not as good as the original, but man, I have fond memories watching that as a kid. Dude, Cinderella Beautiful. 3 is the best. You gotta I, watch, I it. watch it. Desperately. We'll do a review on the podcast when I watch it. Oh, <laughs> bet. <laughs> All right, so now we're moving into the world of Spider-Man, because Across the Spider-Verse comes out dun, this dun, week. Dun, dun, dun. And um, currently, we're rewatching all the movies. We watched Into the Spider Verse. We rewatched the Raimi trilogy. We just rewatched the Tasm movies. Now on to the MCU trilogy, yeah. which we will get through fairly quickly. But Across the Spider Verse comes out this week. Let's do Hell quick, yeah, quick does, predictions baby. or like expectations. I'm so excited. Rumor on the streets is that we're getting a lot more of Gwen in this movie, which is literally they did that for me and only for me and that's so nice of them and i really appreciate them for doing that um like we get to see gwen like in her universe they released a clip the other day of gwen with her dad i'm hyped um hyped to see Can more I be honest huh i've wa- i've watched the trailers when i did trailer reactions i haven't rewatched them since then and i like honest most of the days now with movies i watch trailers like i do the trailer reactions my first time watching it mm-hmm. and then i pretty much forget everything intentionally like i erase <laughs> it from my brain that's and funny. Uh, w- so that I can just go into the theater kind of surprised. Also, I want to talk about early reactions. Okay, go ahead. And I want to say, I think culture and society has become desensitized to the term greatest comic book movie of all time. Mm-hmm. That's a fact. No one can deny it. Uh, we saw it with Guardians 3. We've seen it with The Flash. We've seen it with Spider-Verse. That's three movies in the span of a month and a half, roughly. <laughs> so someone's lying. <laughs> yeah. I think... People constantly suffer from recency bias. And, like, I don't know if this is the case with Across the Spider Verse or not, because obviously we haven't seen it. I firmly believe it'll be a great movie. Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be amazing. I think it might top into the Spider Verse. Uh, But I don't know. People just use the term greatest blank of all time 
so easily and it's like it's like a throwaway term at this point like i know you don't mean it you're just saying it and i think it's a result of um us being deprived of actual good comic movie content for so long yeah especially from the mcu last year was a stinker year for the mcu so now we're getting really good projects i don't know some of them might not be greatest of all time caliber i don't know that's up for we'll see in about two weeks after we see the flash you know if that one lives up to it but we have been living in a world where it's like oh kind of constantly shitting on a bunch of bad projects so the fact that we're getting some good ones is nice now maybe we are about to witness an unprecedented run of three comic book films that are all timers i hope so but i will it's just like i can't take early reaction seriously and i included i get to be a part of the early reaction sometimes when i get to see movies early i think you get very honest um, early reactions. i never yeah I, I really like to think before i spit out words that are such high praise some people do it blindly mm-hmm. not gonna add but you know who i'm talking about i think i think <laughs> we all know who you're talking about i didn't say anything there's multiple people that do it um just anytime any project comes out ever it's just always praises and then four months later somewhere on twitter on a podcast on tiktok shitting on it being like okay what are we doing because four months ago you said it was great <laughs> so what is it who's to say but granted yeah. opinions can change but absolutely i mean i to go from saying the, uh, something is so 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 great and then being like it's trash <laughs> it's garbage it didn't do anything i uh i rewatched the spider-man movies you know i watched them all in 2021 before no way home Rewatching them now i appreciate them all all of them more mm-hmm. you know it's just he's had a little bit of a change of heart on the first yeah. tasman movie yeah he I likes honestly it a little bit more. i think it's one of those movies i walked out of the theater i promise i'll, I'll call up my buddy I after this you. and ask him and i was like that's my favorite spider movie i was 12 <laughs> oh, as you should and so of course every movie i saw was the best thing ever and that's just how it was 12 year old you had taste i loved it and um i enjoyed tasman too a lot i was really upset when they didn't uh green light a sequel so i'm still very upset yeah i would love to see another one but um, then I kind of got older and was like, oh no, they're bad. That just happens. And I rewatched them and they have issues for sure. Both of them, they do. But it's not like they're so overwhelmingly at the forefront of the movie that I can't watch them. Like they suck. Yeah. It's like the good outweighs the bad in both movies. Yeah. So I agree. that's how I feel about that. But yeah, Spider-Verse, I think it's going to be really good. I agree. I think, I think it'll hyped. be a top five Spider-Man movie. I'm hyped. I'm kind of upset that it's apparently, you know, it's it's a part one situation. And so it's not going to, I don't know if how satisfying the ending's going to be. Granted, a, a cliffhanger ending can still be satisfying. <clears throat> Breaking Dawn part one. <laughs> Infinity War. Yeah. Pirates of the Caribbean 2. Yeah. And then you've got Fast X. If it pulls a Fast X, I will shit on this movie. I didn't see Fast X. Essentially, imagine in Across the Spider-Verse, right? We're in the climax of the film and like Miles and Gwen are like, fighting whoever it may be and like the villain of the film is about to like send uh whatever is about to kill them pretty much like something's coming at them cuts the black credits roll what that's how fast x ended essentially that's fucked up yep there was no ending to the movie it won't do that i think it will pull an infinity war where like i think there's gonna be loss but there's still gonna be actual resolution to this story of the movie and it's some of it's gonna carry over to the next one that's all i want better not be gwen we'll see cam We'll see, but um, I think it's time. I think it's time. All right, baby. The big portion, the title of this video, the reason you clicked on it, Spider-Man Hot Takes. Some of these come from Reddit, I believe. Yes, I did my searching on Reddit to get some thoughts from people on their Spider-Man Hot Takes because, you know, Reddit users just sometimes are just off off their rocker. Um, I also asked on my Instagram story, and I asked on Twitter, and I accumulated my favorites and now we're going to go through them and give you our thoughts on if we agree disagree think you're crazy or think you're a genius who knows there's gonna be a wide variety of opinions we have agree or disagree signs so we'll read the take and then we'll throw up if we agree with it or disagree with and we'll elaborate on that and uh, let's just dive right in so the first one says norman osborne sucks he is only popular because of his iconic status not because he is a good villain anymore all right ready three two one disagree strongly uh norman osborne yeah he's iconic he's a all-time great spider-man villain and i don't know how the hell he could suck he's literally peter parker's best friend's father Mm -hmm. runs oscorp Mm -hmm. and he loves peter you know he he's essentially a father figure to him in a lot of versions of the story Mm -hmm. um but then you know if we're specifically going to go the raimi route here he ends up getting corrupted by his own little 
you know, creation. Yeah. And he goes a little cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. I like the concept of Norman Osborn. I wonder if in our lifetime we'll ever get another, like, Norman Osborn. Obviously, there is one in Tasm, but, like, he dies in five seconds, so whatever. Um, I wonder if we'll ever get another Norman Osborn and if anybody will be ballsy enough to do it after Willem Dafoe. Who's to say? I don't think anybody. I don't should. think I don't, anyone can top it. We I got, don't know if anybody. We would got want a Norman to. Osborn in Tasm too, and it was definitely. A well, weak, he was like in, 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 it was in a. Chris on Cooper, his who's a great character actor, but still, it was it was weird. He was there for like five minutes. Weird that they even. even had to include him. I uh, yeah. Who he knows? should have died off screen. Uh, Norman Osborn's goaded. I disagree with that take. Next though, Uncle Ben is a nothing character. He is just a plot device that doesn't need to be a huge deal anymore. Three, two, one disagree strongly you agree now okay let me explain let, okay. let me explain <laughs> i love uncle ben i do okay i do okay anytime i watch any spider-man movie and uncle ben dies i cry like a little baby however i don't think he is a nothing character i disagree with the first part of that statement but him not needing to be a big deal anymore they didn't do uncle ben with the mcu spider-man I know that's a that's a gripe a lot of people have with it, but you can have an Uncle Ben type character for Spider Man that still pushes him in the direction that Uncle Beth's Uncle Ben's death does push Spider Man in. Doesn't necessarily need to be Uncle Ben. I think MC did a fine job without having an Uncle Ben. I don't think you necessarily desperate. It's not the most. Im- it's not the most necessary important thing that you need to see in a Spider-Man movie. Like Gwen's s- Uncle Ben is Peter Parker. That works for me. That's mm-hmm. not just Uncle Ben, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. In terms of the... I was addressing more Uncle Ben's a nothing character. He's a plot device. I strongly disagree. Calling him a plot device is stupid to me. I mean, yes, he's a catalyst for Peter Parker understanding that with great power comes great responsibility mm-hmm. and him like having this rage typically where he goes out and does something and then he's like, oh, I need to maybe pull back on the reins a little bit here. Um, but he's not a nothing character. I mean, yeah, he is the person who's going to die in, you know, early on in Spider-Man's journey. Yeah. Um, but to call him a nothing character. I disagree with that first part. the greatest life advice to Spider-Man, literally something that he bases his, like, entire character off of moving forward is given to him by Uncle Ben, and they even reiterate that in No Way Home. With great power comes great responsibility. I disagree. I disagree with that first part of the sentence. I don't think he's a nothing character. I kind of disagree with the wording overall of their yeah. statement. Yeah. I see their vision, though. I get what they're trying to say. Okay. That's the only reason I held up agree. I also wanted to, you know, The make only thing I will movies. say is, yeah, it's fine that in the MCU we didn't see Uncle Ben. It doesn't bother me, so not being a huge deal, I get it. But everything else, yeah, I disagree. Yeah, I also just wanted to, you know, add a little spice. Fair enough. I'll let you read the next one. All right. The lizard is the only reason Tasm is watchable. Three, two, one. That's the worst take I've ever read in my entire <laughs> life. He is perhaps he's the like, biggest issue with the movie. Well, he's not an issue because he's a he's like the villain. He's decent at best. I think he's a good villain. He's all right. I think he's perfectly fine. That's fine. You have compa- I have compassion for him when I watch Tasm. I mean, yeah, I feel for but him a little he's bit. not the m- only reason it's watchable. There's so many reasons Tasm's watchable. The main reason that movie's watchable is because of Andrew Garfield's charisma blended mm-hmm. with his romantic relationship with Gwen Stacy, which is mm-hmm. the best romance in the Spider-Man films mm-hmm. in, in Tasm one and two. So that's why it's watchable. Tasm is also watchable due, thanks to Sally Field. She's yeah. great. The MA. score. Great score. The web swinging. Great <laughs> what are we web talking swinging. about here? That's way more watchable than just Lizard. That's a horrendous take. Horrible take. Yeah, Absolutely horrid. dog shit take. Um, moving on. I'll read this next one because I personally can't have any input on this one because I. So you're not have, holding up something. I okay. haven't played the game, so okay. I can't. I can't say okay. anything. Uh, someone says the PS game, PS4 game, is overhyped. Three, two, one. Disagree. I think that it is. A great game. It's one of the few games in my life that I've 100%ed, as I call it, where I got the game in, like, I think I got it in late 2018, actually, um, or 19. I, I, I didn't play right when it came out, is what I'm trying to say. And it was, like, the holiday break for me. So yeah. I spent one week straight playing it pretty much <laughs> every day, and I 100%ed Wait, the Wait, I was there when that happened? You were dating me, yeah. I just was at my house, yeah. Wow. <laughs> so I played the game, no-lifed it. It is amazing i love everything about it just the ability to be able to free roam new york city as spidey it's something that every superhero deserves a game like that 
Um, I haven't played Miles Morales. I'm excited for the second one. I am going to replay this game, but no, it's not overhyped at all. The only thing I'll say is overhyped, I think, is uh, the suit. Oh. People say that's the best suit. I disagree. It's a very cool suit. I don't think it's the best suit. Um, but it's far from the best suit. That's my opinion. Interesting, though. interesting. Um, you read the next one. MCU Spider-Man has things too easy pre No Way Home. Yeah. That comment predated the timestamp of No Way Home. So I included that. Okay, okay. So that it was included. Yeah, they yeah, were talking yeah. about Homecoming yeah, and yeah, Far yeah. From Home. So MCU well, Spider-Man has things and too Endgame. easy. Um, yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to hold mine up. All right, you ready? Three, Three two, two one. one. I actually disagree here. I also disagree. It's a common complaint and critique of Tom Holland's Peter Parker that he goes through no loss and he suffers nothing until No Way Home. And I just don't agree at all because let's talk about this. If we're including let's the Infinity War Endgame film, he we loses are. his mentor. He technically mm-hmm. loses Uncle Ben off yeah, screen. Yeah, Uncle Ben <laughs> right? is lost off screen. That is that. So he's living with his aunt, and he's trying to handle the fact that he is Spider Man with being a high school kid. We mm-hmm. see that, but even Far From Home, and you and I talked about this, mm-hmm. and I'll let you elaborate. People think that loss equals death. Like suffering so does not have to mean that people the nearest to you die. Yeah, you can just suffer, like issues in coming of age like relationship issues drama that's still his loss he's struggling being spider-man he's missing out on like crucial things growing up like going and doing the academic decathlon Uh and going and hanging out with his friends he's got to go be spidey like just getting to go to his homecoming yeah he can't even do that he's just he can't be a normal kid and that is the essence of spider-man to me not like people dropping around him like flies (laughs) yeah like that's not necessary people don't drop around toby as spider-man like flies Literally. His Uncle Ben dies, and then Uncle that's Ben it. dies, and then at the very end of the third movie, uh, Franco dies. Uh, oh, I uh, forgot about him. Harry, but that's like, at that point, that's beyond. I forgot about yeah. him. Yeah. He's a villain at that point, kind of. Eh, no, he comes back around. He has a redemption arc, and it's sad, but it's around. it's not as a result of him being Spider-Man. It's a different, you know. I just think that it's interesting, because people complain and be like, oh, people always cast spider-man like way too old he's supposed to be a kid he's he's 14 he's 15 he's in high school he's like a freshman like he's he's just a little boy cast him younger and then they cast him younger they put him in actual high school scenarios like an actual high schooler would go through because no high schooler is actually dealing with what other the other spider-mans deal with (laughs) he's trying to go to homecoming dances he's trying to do school activities he's trying to date girls he's trying to just exist in high school and not get bullied and he can't do the fun things he wants to do he can't go and build a lego set with his best friend because he has to go do spider-man things and granted at the beginning of him being spider-man that's what he wants to do but by the end of it he's like i i I just want to hang out with my friends oh yeah exactly (laughs) (laughs) and just because, once again, just because people aren't dying left and right around him doesn't mean he's not experiencing hard things. Correct. And I think the main gripe people have is they say Tony Stark slash Iron Man bails out Peter a lot. That's like in the first movie, he literally, I think people forget what happens. Mm-hmm. So he's got this new high tech suit from mm-hmm. Tony Stark and he kind of messes around too much. And Tony is like, if you can't have the suit. You know, mm-hmm. What are you? If you you know, this, I don't remember the exact line, but he takes the suit away from him. If you're nothing without the suit, then you shouldn't Correct. have it at all. Yep. There you have it. Great call line me, delivery. Call, so, say, say I'm not an. MC so yeah, he doesn't either. have the suit, and he has to learn from that. That's one of loss. my. He literally his girlfriend to be in his mind. He realizes that her father is the main villain of the film. Brutal. That's a brutal <laughs> moment. And then essentially has to take him down and lose Liz. And mm-hmm. ruin her life in a way. Yeah. And that's not loss? Like, come on now. That's it's, loss. It's like a real it's a very difficult thing to do. Like the scene where he goes to the party with Ned and he's gonna swing in as Spider Man and then he doesn't. Like that's not really a loss for Peter per se, but that's embarrassing for Ned. Yeah. And he feels bad that he did that to Ned. Yeah. But he had to go deal with whatever blue thing exploded somewhere. Who knows? Yeah. So that's what I think about that. I mean, I think the other two experience more loss. I think but- it's I think it's hard to compare any Spider-Man's loss to yeah. what Andrew's Spider-Man goes yep. through. Yep. But um, 100%. They all experience loss in their Correct. own ways. Correct. Some of it's just off screen in the MCU. So, yeah, there you have it. Moving. The MCU requires a lot of off screen imagination for a lot of characters, for sure. Yeah. Um, I'll read the next yeah. one because, again, I don't know where I you have are, so go. 
Again, I have no input on this one because I have not played the game once again. Uh, the PS4 Doc Ock is better than Spider-Man Doc Ock. So Alfred Molina. Three, two, one. I'm disagreeing here. Um, I saw I, this take multiple times on Reddit. I, I mean, look, I have not played the game in a few years, but I just... I'm more moved by Alfred Molina's physical performance, and I find, like, I love uh, the relationship between him and Peter, but I will say we have a lot of that in the game, uh, like, where we just have a normal Otto Octavius, and Peter's, like, helping out with him, and so it's, like, a slow burn buildup into mm -hmm. um, the, you know, the technology going awry, but still, I prefer uh, Spider-Man from the film, Doc Ock from the film, Spider-Man 2. Very nice. Yeah. Do you want to read the next one? Yeah, sure. The Tasm 2 suit may be the most comic accurate, but it's the most boring. Huh. Three. I'm really going to think about this one before oh, I answer think? here. Okay, yeah. I got my answer. Um, ready to go. Okay, ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. <laughs> Disagree. I think Tom Holland's suits are boring. I was about to say, after rewatching this, and Eric from pretty much it has pointed this out too. Yes. It's the smallest thing, but it really does irritate me. The neckline. Yeah. yeah. So we watch this guy on youtube and i'm a member of his patreon he does like commentary tracks and he always talks about the neckline of spider-man suits and because obviously tom holland's isn't necessarily real like it looks like it's like air airbrushed onto his neck like there's no there's no wrinkles it's not real but when you look at andrew when we look at uh toby even in no way home like they're in their physical suits and it just even if Tom isn't a physical suit, it just looks airbrushed onto him it's, as opposed to actual fabric. Yeah, exactly. So I would have to say the Raimi suits, no, like the, the Toby suits are goaded to me. Even the, both the Tasm suits are really good. When mm -hmm. we get into the MCU territory, like the most boring, there's a few that come to mind. I just, the Far From Home suit just does not do it for me. I'm really sorry. Oh yeah, that one's bland. Yeah. I said yeah. that as I'm wearing mm -hmm. black and red, but this is for no. miles technically. Yeah, and then you've got like the Night Monkey suit. Oh, that's yeah. aw that awful. That technically counts as a suit. So yeah, no, no shot. The Tasm 2 suit's iconic and it's comic Tasm accurate. 2 great. suit's great. My, f what's your favorite Spider-Man suit? The Toby ones? I have a soft spot for yeah, the main Toby suit. Yeah, it's pretty my much favorite, the same for the My favorite's part. probably Tasm. I mm -hmm. just think it's the coolest de design. Okay, fair, 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 fair. Moving on, we've got one saying, Electro is better in Tasm 2 than in No Way Home. I gotta think about this one. I have my answer. You do? Yeah. Ready? <sighs> I don't even know. I don't know. This is hard for me. Is it? I have to. Okay, yeah, I'm ready. Okay. You count us down? Three, two, one. I'm agreeing. I think Electro ah! is better <laughs> in The Amazing Spider-Man 2 than in No Way Home. Well, okay. When they say better, are we talking about like the writing or his action? <laughs> it didn't specify, so just in general. I Counter, just... count, uh, take all that into account. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I obviously, anybody who knows me knows I have a soft spot for Tasm 2. Um, I just like, what, I like seeing him turn into Electro. I know his design isn't necessarily the greatest in Tasm 2, but they like he's just he just looks normal in No Way Home, so it's not as fun. And he's like he's full on villain. Which did you hold up? I held up disagree. Okay. So far you're oh! defending. Yeah. Did you mean to hold up this? That's my bad. Okay, you're good. You're good. I was just confused for a sec. That's my I held up bad. Agree. Yeah, all is well. Oh I'm, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought you would have held up. No, I held this up. So I agree. I think he's better in Tasm too. Wow, I had a brain fart. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I was like, where are you going with this? <laughs> I'm so confused. Um, uh, no, we're good. Okay, I think he's I better in Tasm too because he's better written. He just shows up in No Way Home. Like, and I love Jamie Foxx. He j he j literally just shows up. I think his design is better in No Way Home. Like, I but he just shows up and doesn't really have any motive <laughs> like honestly none of them really do only goblin but um in a in the in tasm 2 he's like as cliche as it may be he basically becomes a super fan of spider-man and spider-man's like don't we all yeah oh, wait i don't remember you or whatever and, yeah and then he's like oh i'm gonna kill you now that's kind of that happens in like iron man 3 it happens in literally the incredibles it happens a lot it's a super villain trope but well that's not they do a good job of writing him and he has he like some what's up he doesn't want to kill spider-man because he doesn't remember him it, it, I know, but it triggers him, does it not? All the eyes go to him, and he sees, oh, I Yeah, what triggers him is all the screens yeah, turning into Spider-Man. But he does say, how could you not remember me? Yeah. That is a factor. That is. It's not the main reason, but you know what I was saying. Yeah. What I was trying to get at. Um, yeah, he's better in Tasm 2. 
The design is better in No Way Home, but the character is better in Tasm 2. I feel stupid for holding up the wrong sign. Uh, the next one, really strange for me. The Spider-Verse got old quickly. Mm-hmm. That's what someone said. Okay, so is this referring to... Like, the concept of it. And, like, all the... I don't know if this refers to... If this person was referring to whatever they do with the Spider-Verse in the comics as well. But we can apply it to the concept of the Spider-Verse in terms of, like, the Spider-Verse movies and then, mm-hmm. like, No Way Home, I guess. Mm-hmm. All right. Just the concept of all. All right, the, you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. I'm agreeing with this. Yeah. And what I mean by this is I love Spider-Verse. I love No Way Home. But at a certain point, I think I'm factoring in the variants from the MCU. Like in how there's... I'm, I have variant burnout right now. That's fair. So that's, that's kind fair. of what's that's playing fair. into me. It's become almost gimmicky where it's like, oh, this person from another universe, blah, blah, blah. That's why I'm very curious to see how they do it in Across the Spider-Verse. Because it's cool that there's a lot of Spider-Men out there. You know, we're going to see mm-hmm. a shitload of them in Across the Spider-Verse, literally. Yeah. Um, but in terms of this, I'm more so just thinking the multiversal concept of this character from another universe. It's gotten a little stale for me. You know, that's totally fair. I held up disagree just because I feel like I like the idea of exploring the Spider-Verse, I guess, um, and exploring all the different kinds of spider people that there are. But... Variant burnout is very real and true. When were we first introduced to variants, Loki? Uh, yeah, I, I believe so. God, that yeah. I love. Lo- <laughs> I like Loki as a show. I do, but man, has that made the MCU just a little bit? Ugh, you yeah, know? yeah, I know what you mean. Multiverse of Madness, all of it. Yeah, it's, it's a just lot. now. It's like anytime someone dies, yep. good variant. Uh, yep, exactly. So it almost feels like yeah, cheap in a way. You make a point. So. I just like, I like seeing all the Spider People. I'm interested to see you know what they do in across the spider verse with the billions and billions and billions of spider people that looks like we're gonna meet um i hope that that's not too much of the movie just because that feels like it will be super overwhelming i hope that's like maybe 10 minutes of the movie and then we focus just on like our main ones that we Mm -hmm. know and then spider-man 2099 and like spider woman those can be the new ones that we add that Mm -hmm. we focus on but other than that i don't don't want to focus on too many spider variants i'm right there with you cam moving on we've got one saying the actual plot of no way home is poor people just don't notice it because of andrew and toby three two one i'm disagreeing you're agreeing only because when people say this i get confused because are toby and andrew not the plot (laughs) (laughs) no yeah i know i see what you mean i think that a lot of people will just say the whole spell plot line is weak and I can kind of see where you're coming from, but at the same time, at the end of Far From Home, Peter's identity is revealed to the world, so that's an interesting plot to me. He's yeah. like dealing with, oh my gosh, everyone knows who I am, and it's kind of screwing up my friends who know me and all this, and his life's falling apart in front of him. That's an interesting plot. So he does what any kid his age would do, and he goes, Dr. Strange, please, please like reset this, and then it brings in all these different variants. I think it's an, a very interesting plot. Yeah, I think it's, it's like good. I think that it's amplified by 10 because of Andrew and Toby. And I, I, whenever someone says this, I try to imagine No Way Home without Andrew and Toby in it. And just so much is taken away from the movie. And I don't think that that's like, it's not a bad thing that Toby and Andrew add so much to it. I don't know why people are like, you just don't see that the plot's bad because you're blinded by Toby and Andrew. Why can't I be? (laughs) I'm not blinded. They just are beneficial additions yeah they they amplify the plot they help the plot become better they 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 make the plot make sense because their villains are there yeah like it, it they help it so with, well they enhance the movie because they without them tom's peter parker might not have risen from the ashes they come in and true. they motivate him and they relate to him and connect with him so. like i think if you literally if you pull an andrew and toby out of no way home i think then the plot isn't good but that's because they're an essential part of the plot they're yeah, not just there for shits and giggles. Correct. They yeah. are the plot. Correct, yeah. So I, uh, you know, it is what it is. I think it could have been better in the first hour and a half, but it's not poor. That's why I disagreed. I don't think it's poor. Okay. Um, moving on. The acting in Toby's trilogy is mid, especially Toby's. Three, two, two one. one. I'm going to disagree. So I'm going to disagree. Yeah. Dude. I love, okay, so we just rewatched the Raimi trilogy like yesterday and the day before, and I I love Toby. I love the Raimi trilogy. I love those movies so much. 
However, there are times where Toby just doesn't act with his eyebrows at all or just he doesn't blink. And I'm like, what's he, what's going on? He looks like an animatronic sometimes. I know what you mean. He'll be like, are you kidding me? No. <laughs> MJ. It's like, I, dude, give us something. I just love it. Yeah, I love it's it. It's very campy. He's so, yeah, campy. It embraces what it is. He's not amazing by any means, but I don't think it's mid. I think it's actually pretty solid. I think the villains... He's a pretty good crier, guys. (laughs) (laughs) The villains in Toby's movies are the best acting. Like Defoe and Melina? Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, And honestly, uh, James Franco. Franco's great. Um, Yeah, the only red flag, not red flag, questionable performance to me can be Kirsten Dunst sometimes. Yep, uh, and that but is, she's a great actress in general. That is absolutely the next hot take, which I will read. Yep. Uh, it's a very straightforward hot take. I like MJ in the Raimi trilogy. One, two, three. Hell no for me. She's my least favorite fictional <laughs> character. <laughs> she is so irritating so and without question, the worst live action love interest in a Spider-Man film. I hate her so much. I'm so sorry. I'm, I support all women really until it's mj in the raimi trilogy like i I can't stand i cannot stand her Mm. she she is infuriating and she constantly likes to make things about her i'm just gonna say it granted so does toby or peter at some points which is they that's done on purpose though but in like the first two movies it's like hopping back and forth between dudes and it's like i'm dating harry but actually, I love. I'm, I have a big fat crush on Spider Man. But also, Peter, you're really cute. And it's yeah. like, can we pick one? My issue is she one? is incessantly a damsel in distress. Oh, she can't do anything. <laughs> she can't do a damn thing. Does she set back the feminist movement? Every every <laughs> time she's every time I watch the Raimi trilogy, I feel like I need to go and just do a billion things to help the female race. Like I just, I yeah. it's. It's painful every time she's in trouble. Even when we're introduced to Gwen in the Raimi trilogy and the scaffolding goes through her building or whatever, at least she's doing stuff. Mm -hmm. She runs away. She ducks. She starts running. Building starts tipping. So she's kind of shit out of luck there. She holds onto a phone. Then it breaks. She's holding on for dear life. She holds on for so long. You know that if MJ was in that exact same scenario as Gwen, she would have not even ran. She wouldn't even thought. She might she have voluntarily jumped out of the window. She would have just stood there <laughs> staring at the scaffolding, coming at the building, would have been taken out of the building. If she was holding on for your life, she'd hold on for five seconds yeah. and then fall. And she sh- then what? She no. is the worst. I don't the like worst. her. I'll never like her and I never, yeah. never, ever will. Like when she did the upside down kiss with her husband to like test out. If oh, was, that was so weird. That was icky. Yeah, she just ah. does things that I do not like. That being said, Bully McGuire took it way too far yeah. in the club scene when he was like showing off in front of her with Gwen and then he like Dig on literally this. assaulted MJ. Yeah, he literally <laughs> hit her. He backhanded her in the face like that was too far. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's kind of how I feel about that. Okay, and the next one is Tom Spider-Man can beat Toby Spider-Man in a fight. I always hate comparing the Spider-Man cam, but I'm just going to get down to business. Three, two, one. I'm going to disagree with that. Didn't we like physically see this in No Way Home when Toby stopped him from killing Goblin? Yeah. Wouldn't that mean? Very good point. I, I, I interpret that as Toby stronger. I, I think Toby is. And I mean. He's also definitely more. Uh, it, he's got more experience. Literally, let's just think about this. All right. Toby. Held a train. A moving train. Correct. And I know, I think all three Spider-Men have equal feats of strength. I think they're all equally strong. We just don't see their maximum potential on screen in every movie. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because they're all the same person. They're all Peter Parker, Spider-Man. Yeah. Technically, they're from different universes. It's weird to compare, but I think like hand-to-hand, give me Toby. Look at what, I want everyone to listen. Look at what Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin did to Tom Holland. <laughs> <laughs> Whooped his ass. Yeah. At the end, obviously, Tom could have killed him. But the first time around, whooped his ass. And I mean, Toby still took a beating from Goblin at the end of his first movie, but he still got a lot of good punches in. Toby's just, I don't know. Toby he, survived a literal stab in the back. Yeah. I think Toby's just a little, I think Toby wins. It honestly comes down to personal preference. Give me Toby in a fight. If we're looking at them with, if we're looking at the Noe Home versions of them, 
at this at that point toby i think has far more experience so i think that he would win very true but also tom's younger so he'd be more agile yeah this is true see it's fun i just think toby would win for some reason i feel like anytime anybody asks a question where it's like who would win in a fight this comic book character or this comic book character i always think of stanley's response when someone asked him this at like a panel or something and he's like the real answer is whoever is writing the comic Facts. Quite literally, Facts. there is no answer to this question ever. Yep. It's only whoever is writing the story. Yep. So, there's Give me Toby. Yeah, can't t- <laughs> I cannot answer that. Yeah, I'm writing the story. Give me Toby. Um, <laughs> moving on. The lizard is a dumb villain. The whole concept just doesn't make sense to me. Three, two, one. Disagree. Lizard is a very understood villain. All right. Is he the most compelling of all time? I wouldn't say so. No, I think, you know, there's definitely better villains yeah. than the lizard. However, when I am watching Tasm, I have a lot of compassion for him as a villain. You know, I, I love the scene where uh, Dr. Connors is standing like at that mirror and he's holding up his hand to have the illusion that he has both his hands. Mm. I love that scene. Mm. I think it's a great scene. It's a great scene. And, and he has a good arc. He's good by the end of it. He saves Peter from falling. Yeah. Let's talk about the fact that the lizard could be campy. Sure, that's not dumb, but the second part of this is actually incorrect. The whole concept doesn't make sense to me. We well, must not have been paying attention. I'm sorry to be mean. I'm sorry. I know. I think I know who sent this in. So <laughs> no hate your way. Um, all love. <laughs> but, Maybe re- rewatch, no, yeah. rewatch the movie. Um, but here's my thing, okay? He wants an arm. He tries yeah, to yeah, give yeah. himself an arm. It goes yeah. wrong. He that's like ha- the yeah, concept. That's, that's <laughs> it. It's like he has the potion, not the potion. I've been, I've been in the Disney world lately, guys. Sorry. The he has his little... Uh, yeah, that's the word I was looking for. Thank you. And so he wants to regenerate his arm, and he was testing on the animals, and he's like, screw it. He, he was like essentially going to get fired or kicked out or whatever. So he's like, I'm going to do this anyway, and then he does it, and it turns him into a lizard, and... It's a little weird, um, but it, it does make sense to me. You know what is interesting? Um, the lizard in Gwen's story is a far yeah. more compelling lizard. Really? And I've told you this multiple times, but I'm going to tell the podcast about it. Um, Gw- the lizard in Gwen's universe, there's actually two. At one point, it is Dr. Connors, but the first one is Peter. He is trying to do experiments on himself to give himself powers like S- Spider-Woman because he wants to be like... Spider Woman, and it just doesn't work out, and because he's he is using a, a formula from Doctor Connors, and it doesn't work out, and it turns him into the lizard. So when the lizard shows up and Gwen has to kill him, then it turns back into Peter, and she's like, "Oh fuck, Peter! <laughs> it's so sad." Yeah. And then he's like, "I just wanted to be like you, talking to Spider Woman," yeah. and it's uh, very very sad, and it would it would be a very compelling villain on screen. I know it. Yeah. I know it. Yep. Should we rattle off this next one? Yeah, you read it. Far From Home is a top five Spider-Man movie. Three, two, one. Disagree. I thought you would have held up agree. No. You're I mean, a Far From Home defender. Just because just I en- they'll enjoy the movie, they're, I literally went through my head, no. What is it for you, six? <laughs> six or seven, I don't know. It's <laughs> somewhere back, eight, maybe nine, I don't know. The thing is, there's not a bad Spider-Man movie to me, guys. I mean, and that's call fair. Me crazy. I agree. Let's, let's run this down. I'm not going to spoil my ranking, but let's run this down. Ready? I take Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2, Into the Spider-Verse, No Way Home, and Homecoming over it off the top of my head. Okay. I probably, now the conversation is there's the Amazing Spider-Man, there's Spider-Man 3, there's Far From Home, and there's the Amazing Spider-Man 2. Those are the remaining films, I believe. And mm-hmm. then Across the Spider-Verse, no way is it a top five. And I it's take, not bad. There's just no way it's top five. Take Spider-Man over it. I think I take Spider-Man 2 over it. I take Tasm over it, Tasm 2 over it, Into the Spider-Verse over it, Homecoming over it, No Way Home over it. It's bottom two for yeah, me. Yeah, so, look, I think this movie's overhated. In terms of the MCU, it's one of the more underrated MCU movies. I think it's one of the more underrated Spider-Man movies. I think, I think it's a fun concept. I just, every time I rewatch Far From Home, and I said this to you when we saw it in theaters, we left the theaters, I was like, it's kind of miss, kind of missing New York for me. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just don't like Spider-Man outside of New York for some reason. I think it's a really cool concept to take him out of New York. I like the but concept. But in the confines of this trilogy, there's not enough of him in New York, so it's unfortunate. Yeah. But seeing him outside on this school trip, it's really neat. Jake Gyllenhaal's Mysterio pretty much carries the movie. Yeah, he's, he's like a highlight He's having a blast. And uh, yeah, hi, honey. I love that line. Um, I remember being devastated when... Uh, did you even hear what I just said? Yeah, hi, honey. Oh, okay, I'm just making sure. I remember. I was gonna say I remember being devastated when um, Nick Fury and Maria Hill were 
scrolls. Yeah, the post credit scene. Uh, wow. That was upsetting. Yeah. Hurt me a little bit. Yep. Uh, but no, Far From Home has some glaring issues. I'll go ahead and rattle off one. The character Brad and just the stupidity of the movie. Like there's, this might be one of the more like crickets movies where there's like a lot of missed yeah, jokes. Yeah, humor's not good. Really tried to go and it didn't work. We got the whole night monkey suit scene, which was like cool in concept, but I don't know if it played out that well. Uh, I love the whole third act, though. We'll admit, Remember with the when... drones and the Peter Tingle yeah, finally paying oh, off. Oh yeah, that's Great a good scene. Stuff. That's a good scene. Yeah, that's a good dare I say hallway scene mm-hmm. for Peter Parker. Granted, the hallways yeah. in the air, but still. Yeah. Um, remember when Brad literally takes a picture of Peter with his pants down around his ankles? Yep. <laughs> That's so dumb. Isn't That's, that so funny? It's unforgivably stupid. And then you've got the whole Ned Betty romance, which is like Oh, interesting. It's just it it's fine. It missed the I, mark. No, for me. I really like the movie. It's like a four out of five for me. I don't hate it, but in terms of when I sit down to business and go compare it to other Spider Man movies, it is flawed. Yeah, but it's not every, my go to. Every Spider Man of the three live <laughs> action has a movie that's flawed. That's for fair. this one, Far From Home is the most flawed. Spider-Man 3 and then Tasm 2 for me is the most That's flawed. That's fair. So I enjoy Far From Home more than most. I think it's actually a really good movie, but it's not top five Spider-Man. That's fair. And then there was only one. All I'll right, let you so read this one. Men don't like to admit that Tom is a good Spider-Man just because girls like him. I think that this was the case at the beginning of Tom's Spider-Man career. For sure. Because that was when like a Tom Holland craze was at its peak. That's when I was obsessed with Tom Holland, you know? And so a lot of people didn't want to admit that he was a good Spider-Man because yeah. it was like, girls like him. And I do find, I do think this is the case with a lot of male mm-hmm. fictional characters. Like, mm-hmm, Bucky comes yeah. to mind, for an example. Do you want to go ahead and hold something up, though, for this one? Oh, right. Three, two, one. I disagree. I think that a lot of people don't like the Tom Spider-Man literally because it's in the MCU. <laughs> And that's the only reason. Like a lot of people yeah. who love, it's mainly like hardcore Raimi trilogy fanboys that are so anti Tom. I would say I would hold up agree back in like 2016, 2017, but I now would say disagree. I would, if anything, I would say that this is now the case for Andrew. Yeah. A lot of people yeah. are like, you just like him because he's cute. Yep. I totally see where no, you're coming from. It's just a bonus. Mm-hmm. He's a very attractive man. <laughs> very attractive man. <laughs> Long story short, for all the Spider-Men, I really don't think there's a bad Spider-Man. There's not really a bad Spider-Man movie. It's really hard, I think, to mess up the character of Spider-Man. No, you know? it's, it's extremely hard to mess up. And also, in terms of the movies, really difficult to rank. I'm like ranking them as I go, and it's just like every time I do it, it's hard because I don't think there's a movie below like a 75% out of 100 or like yeah. a 3.5 out of 5. Like. It's brutal. It really is. I find ranking the Spider-Man movies fairly easy, but that's because I have a very heavy bias yeah. towards and a certain couple of the them. The thing that sucks is like I'll put out a ranking video and something has to come in last place. And just because it's in last place, mm-hmm. the assumption is that I hate that movie with a burning passion and it's yeah. terrible. That's not true. Yeah. And that's going to happen. And I enjoy what's in last place for me a lot. Yeah. So it's just like... It's rare, but this is a franchise or a character, I should say, who's had great movies consistently, and that's why they he's age one of, like fine wine too. He's yeah. one of the best characters it's timeless because he's just so good. They'll have another Spider-Man, and in, in fifteen, twenty years, we'll get another one, and it'll just. You really think it'll be that long? Uh, well, I think for, Tom could keep playing him for a while. Tom could play him for ten more years, but we need a fourth movie in <laughs> first. That's true. When is that happening? That's what we need. Um, but knows? no, I, I don't know. Those were some moderately hot takes. We've had hotter ones in the past, and. I actually have a video coming soon on my channel reacting to your Spider-Man hot takes. There's hey, already 70 plus. Yeah, you'll have hotter takes. There will be some all, wild ones. These were all accumulated very last so, minute yeah. today. So That was fun, though. Very fun. Yeah, I'm very excited for Across the Spider-Verse. We see that Tuesday. 29, 30, 31. It's actually, two days from now. Two days from right now, we'll be <laughs> on the way to the theater, probably. Yeah, so this will come out tomorrow. This is going to come out on Monday. Monday, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then by the time you're hearing this... It'll be probably less than 24 hours before we go. Yep. And then the next episode, we'll probably talk about Across the Spider-Verse a little bit. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll do a sort of Spider-Man type ranking thing or something. That could be a big... Yeah, we'll do something. It'll be fun. We can probably... We can rank the Spider-Man variants. Because we'll know them better by then. Yeah. Very fun to do. Um, Spider going on top. Yeah. But in terms of the podcast, we can't guarantee weekly uploads. We'll just do it when we do it and that'll be that. 
So yeah, sometimes we get busy. Like you guys know, we're going to be going to um, Fan Expo Dallas in the second week of June. June 9th, 10th, um, We might be able to pre-film before then, but who knows? I, I have a surgery the first week of July, so I'll be probably in my bed for like a couple of days. So who knows if something will come out that week. You know, there's weeks here and there where we have stuff going on. But two in one month, that's pretty good for us. Especially considering that we left off about 10 months. I'd say that's a win. Yeah, I think we're doing good. Yeah, so slowly but surely it's coming back. And you guys know where to find us elsewhere on our other social media. They're all linked down below. Yeah, if you if you like hearing us talk about Spider-Man and if you want to learn more about Spider-Gwen, I've been doing a lot of Spider-Gwen stuff on my TikTok. There you have it. So you can go check that out. Chris, you know, is always posting stuff literally every day because he's a machine. He's a well-oiled machine, not a creak inside of him. He's just, what's the thing that you put on a door to make it not squeaky? WD-40? Yeah, there's a whole lot of that coursing <laughs> through his veins. He's a well-oiled machine. Um, but yeah, that does it for this That's podcast episode. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Thank you. Make sure you like this. I don't know. Can you like this on like Spotify or anything? I don't know. Leave a nice review. Yeah. And rating. Review it. Rate it. Like it. And come over to the video version and let us know if you listen on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. I'm very curious. You can comment on this video. Yeah. What your Spider-Man hot take Comment is. all your hot takes. Comment your reaction to these Maybe hot takes. Maybe you'll get into his YouTube video. You might just do that. If you comment a hot take, comment I will take Comment the craziest hot take yeah. you've ever taked. Yep. Uh, but that does it. Thank you guys for listening. Stay Unusual, baby.